Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, I'm Jules and I share my journey with GLP-1 medications like Wagovi, Ozempic, Zapbound, and Monjaro. I talk about strength training, nutrition, what it takes to heal your mind, your body from decades of dieting and shame and struggle. So today we're gonna dive into a topic that I think every person on this journey really needs to hear about, whether you are just starting a GLP-1, have been on it for months, you're in maintenance, or if you know, you're at that point where you're like, hmm, I think I might wanna try a GLP-1, but I'm not really sure. This video is for you because we are talking about GLP-1s and shame and the shame that we have carried around for decades, the shame that society has thrown at us, and even the shame that can show up inside this community. Because here's the truth, taking a GLP-1, it's not about cheating, it's not a shortcut, it's not a weakness, it's about healing, restoration, it's finally filling in the gap. It is a biology fixer for something that has been broken for so long. So grab your coffee, grab a drink, settle in, because we are going deep today on this. Okay, let's rewind. Let's talk about everything that you have ever been told about weight loss, right? Eat less, move more. That is the biggest one, right? Just be disciplined. Calories in, calories out. Stop eating carbs, carbs are evil. We have been told to, and I've done this, drink a whole glass of water before meals, help fill you up, uh, chew every bite like 30 times before you swallow, never eat after 7 p.m., track everything, avoid bread, do more cardio, burn more calories, and somehow, magically, everything is just gonna fall into place and we're gonna lose weight and we're gonna be healthier and we're gonna be happier and it's not gonna be a problem. Yet, so many of us have done so many of these things and it's still a freaking struggle. We have lived, literally lived through cycles of this, decades of this, years of it, of doing it, losing weight, regaining the weight, and it just becomes harder and harder as we get older. We've eaten clean, we've pushed more, we've disciplined more, we've willpowered more, and yet the scale keeps going up. So the problem is not that we aren't trying hard enough. The problem is that this advice completely ignores something huge, the elephant in the room huge, our biology. When your body is wired to protect from starvation, when your body is just wired somehow to have such an insatiable appetite or to never feel full, and you're dieting year over year over year, and the hormones like ghrelin, insulin, leptin, they all start to work against you. The hunger gets louder, the fullness disappears, your brain becomes obsessed with food. It's not a lack of willpower, it's biology doing its job. It's just, it's keeping us alive. But society has said, oh, it's your fault. It is your fault, it is your responsibility. And then we blame ourselves, we tell ourselves, we're lazy, we're weak, we're just not disciplined enough. But the reality is we are fighting a system that was stacked against us. A dysregulated metabolism, a misfiring of hormones, a brain that has been trained to see food as comfort and as the enemy. And that's where GLP-1 medications come in to finally address the biology. So where did the shame start? We didn't just wake up one day feeling just ashamed 
disappointed in our bodies and the way we look, this was taught to us. Maybe it started with a partner's offhand comments. Maybe it was your mom or dad going, ah, do you really need to have a second portion of that? Or yeah, maybe you should pass on the dessert you know, tonight. Or maybe it came from a doctor or a teacher or a friend who saw a picture of us and you know, we're like, hmm, you might need to lose a little weight. Who knows where it came from? Or you saw a picture of yourself, all of a sudden it hit you in the face, right? I still remember stepping on the scale, you know, as a teenager and I was like, oof, I don't think that number is a good number for me. And then that number ended up really defining my worth. The scale then became the enemy. The scale wasn't just about data. It was judgment. It was uh, a, another failed diet. It was, you know, when the weight came back and the clothes are fitting tighter and then just, oh, that shame just deepened and it just, it felt awful and you just don't even want to look at it anymore. And then after you do this for years and years, we just kind of feel like this is such a moral failing when it's really a medical condition and science is now validating. It is now telling us a different story because being overweight and being obese, it is a chronic relapsing and biological disease. It's not a lack of willpower. It is a dysregulation across multiple systems. Metabol, meta, meta, I can't speak. Metabolism, hormonal, neurological, and yet, even with all of this research coming in now and all the people benefiting from being on a GLP-1 and the transformations mentally and, and emotionally and of course physically, society is still treating overweight or obese people like they're lazy or weak. And it's such a stigma that runs so deep. It keeps people from reaching out and getting the help that they need that could literally save their lives. So along comes a GLP-1, right? GLP-1 receptor agonists, a medication that mimics a natural hormone in your body called glucagon-like peptide 1. For decades, scientists have known that GLP-1s play such a big role in blood sugar regulation and digestion and satiety, but what they discovered more recently is that it also has an effect on the brain, specifically in areas with appetite control, reward system. So when you take that GLP-1, it helps to restore the gut to brain communication that has been broken for years. And for the first time, the volume of food and that food noise turned down. Cravings quiet. That relentless chatter of what should I eat next? Or should I eat something? Or how much can I eat? Or shouldn't I eat? It's bleh, all that stuff, it starts to fade. You can finally hear yourself think again. For me, it was like a brain reboot. Suddenly, I could make other choices that really aligned with my goals and I could stick with it pretty easily without fighting it so hard, without it being such a struggle because I wasn't fighting myself anymore. My brain and my body were finally on the same team. They were finally like aligned together. And I didn't have to fight those constant cravings. So if you're looking at Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, Monjaro, and someone says, oh, well, you're taking the easy way out. Well, maybe they've never had to fight cravings or they've never had to fight all of that food noise and, and have this uncontrollable appetite or never, they've always had that turnoff signal of like, okay, I'm done. They've never woken up like feeling like starving for food as soon as their feet hit the ground. They have never 
just searched for food and been like, okay, I want to eat that. That doesn't do it. I want to eat that. That doesn't, and just constantly been in that, that mode of like, what's going to fill me up? What's going to, you know, dampen down that, that, that appetite? Because GLP ones, they don't erase discipline. They restore it. They quiet the food noise when we can hear ourselves again. They make space for the habits that actually will create those long-term benefits and create those balanced meals and and do, you still have to do the strength training, the GLP ones aren't doing them for you. And you still have to go and get good sleep and mitigate your stress and all these things, but they may help make those things happen. And for the first time, it doesn't feel so impossible. GLP ones are not a monotherapy. So I want to be super, super clear about that. It's not just about taking the shot and doing nothing else. They are super powerful, but they're, they're not just like a magic wand. If you're taking a GLP one and you're still eating highly processed foods, nutrient poor foods, fast food, you're not moving your body, you're ignoring getting good sleep, your stress levels are sky high and you're not addressing that, you're going to still struggle. You're going to still be on that struggle bus even with a GLP-1 because they are a tool but it is not a cure. They create space, space in your mind, space to create better habits, space to breathe, and create new routines. That's why pairing the medication with healthy lifestyle, all those changes is so, so important. So for me, that meant really focusing on strength training and building muscle, hitting my protein goals, walking every single day, making sure that I am getting sufficient and quality sleep and staying hydrated and drinking my water and helping to manage my stress levels and creating ways of being able to do that. And these things do work with the medication to help rebuild the metabolism and confidence and self-esteem. I used to think in the past about dieting and health and well-being, and it was all about restriction deprivation. It was less, less this, less that, less food, less enjoyment, just less of everything. And it was more of a negative. And I was like, you know, you get to a point where like, I just, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't, I don't want to have to restrict. I don't want to have to do all these things. It's really depressing because then at the end anyway, I'm just going to bounce right back. But now it's about choosing the foods that fuel me. It's about making me feel stronger. It's about freedom, not restriction. And it all helps to work with your body and your brain. And now it's like, ding, the biology is back online. And that's the GLP-1. That is the GLP-1 helping to heal all these things and make it all possible. So here's where I wish more people would actually talk about this. The shame doesn't just come from those who've never taken a GLP-1. Sometimes it actually comes from within our own community. I've seen it. You've probably seen it. People judging other people online. Like, why are you still on a GLP-1? Why are you taking so much of a GLP-1? Why is your dose that high? Why aren't you titrating lower or getting off of it? Or you're not doing it right. And I'm like, that kind of hurts, you know? Like, we're all fighting the same battle. We're just at different stages. And some of us are going to stay on a GLP-1 for life. And some of us are gonna stay on a higher dose and some of us can come down, but Maintenance is, it's all about, it's so individual. You can't tell one individual how to do it. They have to figure it out for themselves and what works for their bodies. And every path is a valid path. There is no right or wrong way to do it. What matters the most is what gives you peace, calmness, health, 
what helps you to maintain without overly thinking about something, what's going to be sustainable long-term. Living longer, moving better, sleeping better, feeling confident. Well, those are success factors. So we need to stop the gatekeeping on the health and start supporting one another because you don't know what someone else's journey is, right? I don't know your journey. I don't know that person's journey and whatever it means for them and what's going on behind the scenes because everyone's so different, like their hormones, genetics, past trauma, PTSD, if anyone's on medication, what their stress level is. So I think if we could all just try and just give a little more compassion, especially within the community, because I've seen it, it's come at me as well. I've seen it in the comments, I've seen it in messages, and the, just the negativity, I'm just like, where is this coming from? Like, I'm just trying to spread positive vibes out there and encourage people. So I think that when I think back to before I started my GLP-1 journey, I, I so remember how loud that food noise was. And every social event or trip or activity or whatever, it was all like, all that stuff was all planned around it, right? What I could do, what I couldn't do. And now all that stuff's just quiet. It doesn't, it's just not there anymore. Having that space to think again, to have a new purpose, better relationships, that's what this does. It helps to give us our lives back to do other things. GLP-1s, they don't take away joy, they give it back. They help your biology to work with you so you're not fighting your body anymore. You start to trust yourself, you start to trust your body, and for the first time, health is not a punishment. It doesn't feel like that, right? It, it's, it's peaceful and calm. So if you're watching this, and you've ever felt judged or misunderstood or ashamed, hear me out. You're not weak, you're not broken, you are taking control of your health, you are choosing to break a cycle you've been in, perhaps for generations, and you are in, you're choosing to live and not just survive. And that, my friends, is something to be incredibly proud of. And if you are misunderstood by other people, that's okay. Because you don't need to be understood by everyone. It's your body, it's your health, it is your journey. And I'm here to cheer you on every step of the way. If this video resonated with you, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up if you're new, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button so you always know when the next video is coming. Leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts are, and I would love to be able to hear from you. I'm sure others as well. Everyone loves to read everyone's comments. I try to read through all of them and respond as well to everybody's comment. So let's try and replace this shame with more understanding. Silence sometimes is the biggest way of showing strength. And we are a community where we are growing and we're getting stronger. And we are just spreading that compassion, that love, that caring to others. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next video and stay strong.